What is the Christian understanding of the Armageddon? The word Armageddon is a Greek word that itself comes from a Hebrew uh, uh, cognate and a Hebrew uh, origin word, Har Majido. And Har in, in Hebrew means a hilltop, and Majido is the name of an ancient city, Megiddo now. Uh, it's the name of an ancient city that now falls in the land of Israel, the, the, the territories and, and, and whatnot. And this, this city of Megiddo, it is close to the city of modern city of Haifa, Jaffa, and of Nazareth. The city of, of Haifa and Nazareth, it is north of Jerusalem. And this, even in pre-biblical times, even in ancient times, uh, this was a city that was inhabited by the ancient Canaanites. It's been inhabited by 7,000 years, one of the ancient cities of the world. And the Bible mentions the city of of Megiddo multiple times and there are cryptic references in the book of revelations that there will be this massive war what the book of Reve the book of revelations by the way is a book in the bible in which there are predictions for the future ashrat the sa'a for the for the christians is in the book of revelations the beast 666 the book of revelations okay antichrist the book of revelations it's very cryptic and that's why even many Christians don't read it. It's not an easy text to understand. So uh, there are cryptic references in the book of Revelations to the big battle at Har Megiddo, hence Armageddon. Okay, hence Armageddon. The term Armageddon comes from Har Megiddo, the hilltops of Megiddo, uh, of Megiddo. And there are a number of interpretations of modern day Christians with regards to these, these statements. Many Christians, this is the default amongst the you know, non-Protestants, uh, many of them, they just reject this. These are just tales. They don't believe. You know, again, Muslims, learn your Christianity if you want to be involved in da'wah. Not all Christians are the same, just like not all Muslims are the same. Many Christians don't consider the Bible to be the Word of God anyway. This is the default in America. The majority of Christians do not take the Bible literally. So it's not a big deal for them if the book of Revelation says something, no big deal. However, some strands of Christians take the Bible literally. And in particular, of course, evangelicals and the Baptist strand, this is well known for this. And so for them, they have a very, very particular belief in the second coming of Jesus and in the resurrection of the dead and in the rapture, it's called, and in the Armageddon. Now, now is not the time to get into the, the series of events they believe in. There are multiple strands within Christianity. Please study them if you're interested. You have the pre-millennialists, you have the post-millennialists, you have the amillennialists. All of these are various strands of Christianity. Baptists in particular are associated with the strand called pre-millennialism, pre-millennialism, which believes that the second coming of Jesus Christ will be in two stages, that Jesus will come and there will be a seven-year period of tribulation. And the beginning of that will be something called a rapture. And what is the rapture? The rapture for this strand of Christianity, not all Baptists, but most Baptists and many Christians believe this, and it is becoming very common now. There's genre of literature and lots of famous books are being written that are science fiction or not science fiction, fantasy and whatnot, Christian literature and uh, cartoons and whatnot that are watched in, in Christian circles of the imminent coming of the rapture. What is the rapture? For, the, for them, they believe when Jesus comes down, Christians will rise up to meet him in heaven. That's the rapture. They will meet him midway. And they believe that for seven years, there will be this, this battle between the forces of good and evil. The Antichrist will come. By the way, seven years is also in Islamic literature. That's there as well. There's going to be forces between the Antichrist and the righteous people. Then Jesus will come down after seven years and defeat the Antichrist. And then there will be permanent peace on this earth. And then there will be judgment after that. And by the way, some Christian sects believe when Jesus comes again for the second time, that is judgment right then and there. There is no heaven and hell. So the seven-day Adventists, for example, that's what they believe. There is no heaven and hell for them. They believe the coming of Jesus is the uh, itself uh, heaven and hell. And the point being, of course, and there was a survey done a number of years ago, the point being, we need to understand evangelical support for modern politics in light of the belief of the rapture and the belief of the coming of Christ and Antichrist, okay? Over 80% of evangelicals over 80 percent that's not a small number evangelicals not all of americans evangelical americans over 80 percent say that the creation of israel in 1948 is in partial fulfillment of the biblical prophecy and it is signaling the coming of jesus christ 
And that is why I said this before, and again, I have to get political. When Trump makes Jerusalem the capital of that confiscated region, of that occupied region, Trump couldn't care less what the capital is. But he wants to appeal to his, his base. The making of Jerusalem the capital is all a part of biblical prophecy. It is all a part of what they believe before the coming of Jesus Christ and before the rapture and before, you know, all of this is going to take place. And so you, you need to understand this group of, of Christians that support this particular candidate, they don't care whether he's racist or not. Frankly, from their perspective, even if he is, if he's expediting the coming of Jesus, what's better than that? You see, there are bigger goals to them. And here is the point. Armageddon? from their perspective who's going to be on the other side hello ya jama'a <laughs> muslims and palestinians let's be brutally honest here so why would they have any love for that group of people think about it right their heart qasiyatan qulubuhum because they have theology that is clouding their humanity they have theology that is clouding their humanity they're not looking at them as breathing, living individuals anymore. They're looking at the second coming of Jesus. They're looking at Jesus coming back. They want to expedite that process. From their perspective, who is the Antichrist? My dear Muslim brothers and sisters, they call our Prophet ﷺ that title, A'udhu Billah, A'udhu Billah. I'm sorry to say this in a masjid of Allah, but we are living in a land where these, these theolog theological beliefs impact politics. We need to educate ourselves. All that I'm talking about isn't just Kalam and here saying no, it is realities that impacts policies that impacts us. So we need to understand our beliefs, and they're radically different from Christian beliefs. They're definitely not xenophobic. We believe many of the Romans will convert, they're gonna be inside the truth. But they don't believe that. They believe all of us will be in the army of the Antichrist. That's their aqidah. So why should they have any sympathy for us? That's why we need to educate ourselves and them about especially this important topic and clarify our beliefs are different. We also believe in the coming of Jesus. But guess what? We will be on the side of Jesus. You will have to make up your mind. Are you on the side of truth? Are you, will you be with that 70,000? Oh, you'll be on the side of falsehood. Our time is up for today.